Hey, welcome back, Cloud Scholars. I hope your day is going well. I am your host, Kieran Tross, with another how-to video. In today's video, I want to uh, focus on uh, conditional access policies, but specifically on session control. So let's go over to our conditional access policy. We're going to go to new policy, and we're going to call this session control. We're going to users. We're going to get a specific group of users. We're going to throw in our all users group. And then we're going to go to cloud apps. We're going to say all cloud apps. And then conditions. We'll leave this empty at the moment. You know, we're not really too concerned about that. Um, but you know what? Let's go to include. Let's configure this. Um, let's do any device. Client apps, configure everything that comes through. Um, we're not filtering for devices. We'll leave that empty locations. We don't worry about that or user risk. So it says allow. We're going to grant access. We're going to require MFA multi factor authentication. And we're going to click select. And then down here where it says session. This is where I really want to focus on today. So for session control, um, there's a bunch of different options here. We're not really going to go into use app enforce restrictions. As you see, I don't have a license right now for 365. I'm just paying for Azure um, or SharePoint. So I'm not going to be able to really get that going. Then there's use conditional access app control, where this is giving you specific access based on the application and various applications within the Microsoft ecosystem. We're not going to focus on this in this video. I think that this is a whole session in itself. And this customized continual access evaluation, this is a new um, feature, uh, relatively new, um, but I don't want to focus on that one or the save resilient defaults. I'm more focused on the sign in frequency and the persistent browser sessions. So let's look at sign in frequency. So the time period before a user is asked to sign in again when attempting to access a resource. The default setting is a rolling window of 90 days. Users will be asked to re-authenticate on the first attempt to access a resource after being inactive on their machine for 90 days. So by default, that is unsecure. Let's say something happens and a user in your environment laptop gets taken away um, or stolen. They went to wait for a resort or they just went on vacation. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and the laptop is stolen and they're logging into your company resources on their personal laptop. They just went to portal.office. And they have a weak password on it or worse, they don't have any password on their machine. Whoever gets that laptop, boots it up, is able to now go into the browser and get everything that's saved in that browser and not be re-authenticated. So now it's just, you know, they're at your mercy at this moment, right? Well, you're at their mercy, I should say. So what we want to do is we want to click on this sign in frequency and we want to do the periodic reauthentication. So there's two different ones. There's hours and days. I would recommend you do hours and then it's giving me an error because it says the value must be between one and 23. So if you want within your organization, you can set it to something like every eight hours or every three hours. I wouldn't do it every hour because then you're just going to uh, cause an issue with your user's um, experience. So basically what this is saying is, hey, if you signed in, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you will have to sign in again at 8 p.m. because the periodic reauthentication is every eight hours. And you can change this to whatever you want. It has to be between 1 and 23. So that's why. So if I come back here and I hit 0, you see the value must be between 1 and 23. So we're going to make sure we're going to put it to eight hours. This is one of the things I recommend. And if you do every time, then that's just, you're not going to want to do that. So I would do it for every eight hours, and then I select the unit of hours instead of days. And then there's persistent browser sessions. So persistent browser session allows users to remain signed in after closing and reopening their browser window. So what it says here is, so if somebody closes and opens it up, then it's going to persist. And I would put this to never. If that was, if you know, in, in my environment. And this says this setting works correctly when all cloud apps are selected. So this is when it's referring to up here where it says all cloud apps. And 
It also says uh, this does not affect token lifetime or the sign in frequency setting. So this setting here is independent of this sign in frequency setting here. So let's also go through a little bit more. This will override the show option to stay signed in policy in the company branding. So when users first sign in and they say, hey, you want me to stay signed in? It's going to override that. And that's what pretty much everybody does. They say, oh, keep me signed in because I don't feel like putting in my credentials again. So that is going to override that where it comes up. So if you just says stay signed in, it doesn't matter. You put this on, they will have to re-sign in. Then it's uh, never persistent will override any persistent SSO claims passed in from the federated authentication service. And then never persistent will prevent SSO on mobile devices across applications and, and between applications and the user's mobile browser. So there's two ways you can go about doing this. You can say always persist or never persist. We're gonna put never persist. And then we're going to click select. And then you can enable the policy and report only mode. So if you are now putting this in your organization, I would say put it on report only mode so you can see exactly when the policy is being applied and um, how it's uh, being applied to users. And then you can put it on on and then off. So we're going to go on and we're going to click create. So while that's getting booted up, we'll just wait. And then it says, okay, it's successful. Okay, and that's pretty much it. And that's how you go about setting that up um, for your conditional access. Uh, I just wanted to show you all just how session control works. And I chose those two specific topics to talk about. Um, there are much more stuff that you can do within session control. What I recommend with conditional access policies is when you're implementing it, I would say implement uh, policies specifically for what you need to do. Don't combine it up within like eight different things in that policy because what happens is um, if something does go wrong, you won't know exactly which which specific function or specific um, um, function or task that you set on that conditional access policy is causing the problem. So, for instance, if you want to MFA everyone, you can MFA everyone. If you want to, you know, set a specific um, policy on guest users. I would say just set another policy on that. Try to make your policies very specific and very direct. Um, some people are like, oh, I don't want to have like 20 policies. Yeah, I, I totally get that. I don't think you really need to have like 30 or 40 policies, but every organization is different. It doesn't, there's no, you know, one size fits all. It's just really about, you know, how your organization is. And then you also want to make sure that you're not causing anything that's detrimental to your organization that now your users are unable to work. So you always have to take that in mind. So as always, if you find the content of this video valuable, please hit that like and subscribe button here at Cloud Scholars. Our goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time. <music>